Hey guys, Meyer here. A few weeks ago, I finally got my hands on a second joystick, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my key bindings for Twin Stick Flight. As I will be going through most of the key binds necessary for flight, this tutorial should be somewhat useful for people using other configurations. For beginners, setting up your key bindings can be a bit overwhelming, and the default key maps aren't particularly relevant for a desired setup, so before we begin, here's an overview of my current key map. A link will be available for reference in the description. I'll be showing you how to set up basic movement and targeting systems, as well as covering input sensitivity and managing your profiles. For a movement, I assign pitch, yaw, and roll to my right-handed stick. However, left-handed pilots may feel more comfortable assigning these settings to their dominant hand. In this demonstration, the game recognizes my right-handed Logitech stick as input 2 due to the order in which I plugged in my joysticks, so don't be concerned if it's different for you. I have all my throttle settings assigned to the cap on my left, as I find it provides better accessibility to the throttle when using a dual-stick setup over the conventional throttle slider. Double-tapping directions are set to putting the throttle at max or cutting it completely. I remove the granular throttle up-down setting, which uses the slider, as this overrides any adjustments to the throttle made by using the hand. Last for movement, I set strafing to the thrustmaster on the left. Strafing is invaluable for the stick user as it grants you granular control to your speed in any direction without having to use the throttle. This has to be done for decoupled mode as well. You'll need to invert your forward-back strafing in control options to make the ship behave logically in this configuration. You may also want to adjust your sensitivity settings in control configuration, as you may find the default setting a bit too temperamental, especially for takeoff and landing, but also for position aiming. Once you've set all this up, I suggest you try out your new settings on free flight mode to get a feel for your ship and to change things as need be. It may feel rocky at first compared to keyboard and mouse controls, but eventually you'll get a feel for the granular precision that the dual stick flight allows. Try using the environment to test your agility. Next off is targeting. You'll see that I remove a number of these initial settings as they aren't that relevant to our configuration and are actually using up bindings for our intended key map. I then change a number of these other settings involving resetting targets and locking gimbals to a single key to save on space on the joystick. I prefer to use my left stick for purely movement purposes and my right for more combat-oriented roles, so I set targeting, pinning, and missile locking to the right hand. As I primarily run single reticule or monoboat setups, I have all weapon groups assigned to one trigger. Those using larger ships with mixed weapons may benefit from reassigning other keys for flexibility. All of my defensive keys are also set to the right stick, including shields. As a single-seater ship only goes as far as four directional shields, I leave some of these out. Once you've completed this, give Vandal Swarm a go and adjust the rest of your keys until you feel comfortable with your controls. Some will pick this up faster than others. It took a few days to get used to this setup, but over time, it'll become second nature. One of the benefits that I've found for using two joysticks over a keyboard and mouse is the granular control of strafe compared to the binary controls of a keyboard. In dogfighting, this gives me more control when adjusting distance between myself from other ships while using match speed, and allows me to land smoothly without the need to madly feather my keyboard to achieve the same effect. One last thing. Now that you've set up your button configuration, you may name and save it for future use. It'll be found in the user folder of your Star Citizen install directory. I recommend saving a copy of this file as it may get deleted as a result of an in-game patch. To import custom bindings, simply select the profile and the peripheral whose bindings you wish to replace. Since many ships handle differently in subtle ways, you may want to have several profiles tailored to your preferences for each ship. I hope you found this brief tutorial informative. If you liked this video, please do subscribe and I'll see you again for more Star Citizen content. And as always, thanks for watching.